Facebook today unveiled a digital currency. It's called Libra, and it's set up to be an alternative financial system using secure blockchain-based technology backed by hard assets. The social media giant has lined up big corporate partners like MasterCard and PayPal and Uber, and it's all designed for ordinary users, which Facebook says is one of the things that sets Libra apart from other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. If you want to compare Libra with traditional cryptocurrencies, the first thing uh, and the first big difference is that typically cryptocurrencies are investment vehicles or uh, you know investment assets rather than being great medium of exchange and uh, and this is really designed from the ground up to be a great medium of exchange a very high quality form of digital money that you can use for everyday payments and cross-border payments microtransactions and all kinds of different things so how is this going to work joining us with a quick tutorial on libra is ben fox rubin he's senior reporter at CNET. Good to see you, Ben. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. So as he said, I mean, a, a, a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin is meant to be a store of value, something like gold. But with Libra, this is more of a transaction mechanism, isn't it? Yeah. Um, in general, it works a lot like most any other digital currency where what you would do is take your dollars or any other currency, transfer them over into Libra, put them in a digital wallet. This one's called Calibra. And uh, this is where it changes. Instead of uh, actually keeping them in the digital wallet and hoping the value goes up, the argument would be that you would actually use it for goods and services. At least that's what uh, Facebook is hoping to do here. And this is backed by a basket of currencies, right? I mean, it, it, these are for international transactions as well. Yeah, arguably uh, Bitcoin and a lot of other cryptocurrencies could also be used for international transactions. You could argue that Facebook is really trying to do what Bitcoin was hoping to do, to create an international currency that kind of wipes away uh, borders and boundaries and makes it much easier to do cross-border transactions. So uh, we'll see if that actually comes to bear, obviously. There are no, at this point, no banks involved in this consortium. So who's holding on to my money when I give it to who? Facebook or somebody? So it, it, there is an association, a nonprofit association called the Libra Association that is going to be operating this. But that's a really good question. I'm kind of not entirely sure what happens to the money when you do convert it into Libra. Uh, even though there aren't banks involved, there are some very trusted names in the financial industry that are going to be involved. Those include PayPal, Visa, and MasterCard. So uh, it's not as if uh, this is um, a, a kind of a willy-nilly group that doesn't know anything about uh, finances. And again, this is more, uh, as I understand it, about peer-to-peer -peer transactions. I'm not going to go out and buy a, a hamburger with this necessarily unless a McDonald's or some other fast food chain decides they're going to accept Libra currencies, correct? That is entirely true. And I would probably say that Facebook is really hoping somebody like McDonald's would start accepting Libra. The way Facebook is trying to push this, they're saying ordinary Americans, ordinary people from all over the world can jump on the digital currency bandwagon and potentially use uh, this digital currency for any number of goods and services, whether they're making a purchase on eBay, maybe they're paying their bills, or they're also uh, sharing money with friends and family. So they're hoping anything and everything can be used uh, with Libra. Very quickly, uh, Sheila Baer, the former FDIC chair, told me today she's skeptical this gets off the ground because of regulatory hurdles. What do you think? That's possible. Uh, I think a lot of the regulatory hurdles that Facebook faces have a lot to do with the potential that it has a monopoly. So uh, that is definitely going to be a consideration. As far as regulation related to cryptocurrencies, there really aren't that many. So I'm not entirely sure what's going to prevent uh, this kind of thing from jumping off the ground from that regulatory perspective. Right. Clearly, a lot more questions than answers right now. We'll see what happens. Ben Fox Rubin from CNET. Thanks again for joining us tonight, Ben. Thank you.